During the mid to late 2010s, there were not many pitchers as dominant as Chris Sale. He finished top six in Cy Young voting for seven straight seasons, anchored the Boston Red Sox rotation to the World Series, and even became the fastest to ever reach 2,000 strikeouts. However, following injury after injury after injury, he was limited to just 56 starts between 2019 to 2023. But after a move this past offseason to the Atlanta Braves, he has found a second win, currently finding himself among the game's top pitchers once again in most major categories. So how did Sale go from being one of the game's best pitchers to a forgotten man on the injury list for five years to now a Cy Young favorite in the NL? Well, let's take a look back at Chris Sale's up and down career. Chris Sale was born and raised in Florida, attending Lakeland High School where he would go on to partake in two seasons with the JV baseball squad before making his varsity debut. And at the time, his baseball coach wasn't too impressed with him, mentioning he was nothing great and didn't stand out. He also stated he didn't see anything in him that would have made him think he could succeed in the majors. But over the next two seasons on the varsity squad, Sale impressed enough to be drafted by the Colorado Rockies in the 21st round of the 2007 draft. However, he decided to attend Gulf Coast University where he only raised his profile. During his first season, he was named to the Atlantic Sun Conference All-Freshman Team. Then in the following year, he pitched in the coveted Cape Cod Baseball League for the Yarmouth Dennis Red Sox, where he pitched to the tune of a 147 ERA, was named MVP at the league's All-Star Game at Fenway Park, and he also took home the league's Outstanding Pitcher Award. Then during the college season in 2010, Sale continued to find success, going an incredible 11-0 with just a 201 ERA and 100 146 strikeouts compared to 14 walks. This incredible level of swing and miss stuff combined with his ability to command the strike zone made him a first round target for many clubs, and he was ultimately selected 13th overall by the Chicago White Sox with a signing bonus north of $1 million. When Sale signed in Chicago, he was assigned to the club's Class A affiliate, the Winston-Salem Dash and he would go on to pitch four games with them, allowing just one earned run in four innings before being moved up to AAA. At this level, he was able to force a club's hand even more by posting a 284 ERA and 15 strikeouts in just six and a third innings pitched. Because of this, the White Sox selected his contract on August 4th, making him the first player taken in the 2010 draft to be promoted to the majors. At the time of his promotion, the Sox were battling in the AL Central with a 61-46 and record, just one and a half games up over the Minnesota Twins. And although they ultimately lost the division with a poor September, it wasn't due to Chris Sale. In fact, he found great success. Down the stretch, Sale featured in 21 games, excelling with a 193 ERA and 12.3 strikeouts per nine in 23 and a third innings pitched, helping him etch his name into the team's opening day roster the following season as a multiple innings guy. In this role, he was able to enjoy his first full major league season, becoming the most important man out of the pen for the Sox as he accumulated the most innings pitched at 71, doing so with a 270 ERA. And after Mark Burley said goodbye to the club following the 2011 season, a spot in the rotation finally opened up and Sale took it, never once looking back. In his first few months as a starter, he made the transition as smooth as you could, allowing no more than three earned runs in any of his first 12 starts. He even won Pitcher of the Month in May when he posted a 171 ERA in 31 and two thirds innings pitched, with his outing on May 28th against the Tampa Bay Rays being the highlight when he went seven and a third innings pitched, allowing just one earned run and struck out 15 batters helping the club win by a narrow scoreline of 2-1. In the end, Sale had impressive numbers for his first season in the rotation, with a 3.05 ERA across 30 games, 29 of which being starts, helping him finish 6th best in Cy Young voting. For this reason, the club inked him to a 5-year $32 million extension, with two club options totaling $27.5 million. It was a great reward for the promising young lefty, and just a few years later, the contract had already paid for itself. Because from 2012 to 2016, across both leagues, he had the 7th lowest ERA at 304, tied for the second most complete games at 14, the third most strikeouts only trailing Max Scherzer and Clayton Kershaw, and finally, he never once finished lower than 6th place in Cy Young voting. His success helped numb the fact that the White Sox stunk, managing just one season above a 500 winning percentage. And with Sale entering his final season before the club options, he was moved to the Red Sox for a hefty return, including Yohan Moncada, Michael Kopech, Luis Alexander Basabe, and Victor Diaz. Now, the latter two did not amount to anything at the majors, but Moncada and Kopech have posted 19.5 war between them, a number that looks to continue to grow with both still under contract in Chicago. But regardless, it's pretty fair to say the Sox won this deal. I, I mean, the Red Sox won this deal, with Sale going on to become the ace a club needed to compete with the best teams in baseball. In his first season, he posted a 290 ERA across 32 starts with 12.9 strikeouts per nine. 
He also became the first American League pitcher to eclipse 300 strikeouts in a single season since former Red Sox Pedro Martinez did so in 1999. A huge accomplishment, but this is nothing in comparison to his 2018 season. Across 27 starts, he tossed a career-best 2.11 ERA with 13.5 strikeouts per nine. And if it weren't for a pesky shoulder injury that cost him a month late in the season, he would have posted the required innings pitch for that figure to qualify. And if it had, he would have posted the greatest single season mark in MLB history, which just goes to show how effective he was each time he took the mound. And while he didn't necessarily bring that same level of dominance over into the postseason, managing a 4-11 ERA in his 15 and a third innings pitched, this can be overlooked because in Game 5 against Los Angeles Dodgers in the World Series, he struck out the side in the ninth, sending Manny Machado down on one knee for the final out of the game. His World Series triumph marked the fourth time this century the Sox have lifted the most prestigious trophy in baseball, the most among any team. And as for Sale, this moment was everything he had worked for and gave us this quote after their victory. Sitting in my bed, throwing a ball against the ceiling, playing catch with my dad, my mom dragging me all over the state of Florida my entire life, this goes out to a lot of people. There's a lot of people that got me to this point and I appreciate every single person. All of this hard work continued to pay off for Sale and his loved ones as he signed a five-year, $145 million extension with the Red Sox the week before the 2019 season kicked off. This deal was a great reward for Sale, who worked vigorously to get to this point in his career, and with his great track record, with 2018 being his seventh straight season finishing top six for Cy Young voting, the Sox were locking down one of the most dominant and consistent pitchers in the game of baseball. But unfortunately for both sides, this is where everything took a steep turn. But now a word for today's sponsor, Under 510 Clothing. Under 510 provides a clear answer to a major consumer need by providing comfortable and affordable clothing for shorter guys like myself. They have breathable t-shirts, great to work out in, lightweight shorts, perfect for taking a little pupper for a walk, and many more such as joggers, khakis, and button-down shirts. And by clicking the link in the description, you get $10 off your first order of $50 or more. They also provide free US shipping on orders over $150, so you can buy multiple sizes and see which one works best for you. All right, thank you 510 for sponsoring this video. Now back to the content. In 2019, while Sale showed flashes of why he was worth his new heavy price tag, like his outing on May 14th against the Colorado Rockies, going seven strong innings with 17 strikeouts, or his complete game shutout a couple weeks later against the Kansas City Royals. However, he was largely ineffective for the majority of the year, finishing the season with his highest ERA mark at 440 and the fewest starts in a season at 25 because of elbow inflammation, which shut him down for the season in mid-August. This injury also warranted a visit to the notorious Dr. James Andrew, an orthopedic surgeon who has become quite popular around professional athletes, having worked on MLB stars like Roger Clemens, John Smoltz, and many more. During their visit together, there were no tears discovered in Sale's elbow, a huge sigh of relief, and the Sox decided to treat him with a PRP injection and rest. However, in March of the following year, his elbow injury worsened, resulting in him requiring Tommy John surgery, shutting down any hopes of him playing in 2020, as well as the majority of 2021. In fact, it took him 732 days between his last start on August 13th, 2019, to when he made his return to the mound on August 14th, 2021. His addition to the club was a huge bonus for the Sox, who found themselves in a very tight wildcard race just two and a half games above the Yankees and four and a half over the surging Blue Jays and Mariners. But Sale helped fight them off, managing a 3.16 ERA in his nine starts, helping the Sox record wins in seven. At this point, it felt like his big career hurdle was finally past him once he returned from Tommy John. After all, prior to his surgery, he was known as a consistent, durable starter. Sure, he might have missed a week or month here and there, but from 2012 to 2019, he started in at least 25 games every single season. But this was only the start of the lengthy injuries that derailed his Red Sox career. While building up at his alma mater for the 2022 season, he suffered a stress fracture in his right rib while throwing batting practice forcing him to start the season on the 60-day injured list. At this time, it was clear the frustration over his injuries and lack of availability over the previous few seasons was getting to him. And after not being up to his best in a minor league rehab start, he went to town smashing numerous items in the tunnel at AAA Portland. But despite this, following the game, he was activated off the injured list and made his season debut against the Tampa Bay Rays, in which he was vintage sale, going five innings pitched, no earned runs, and five strikeouts. It was an intriguing sign for the Southpaw as he still had enough time left in the season to start 10 to 15 games. But in the first inning of his second start, he was hit with a comebacker off the bat of Aaron Hicks, 
taking it right off his pinky finger on his throwing arm, resulting in yet another surgery. Now, this was not supposed to be season ending. In fact, he was given a timetable of around four to six weeks before he could get back to the rotation. But this is where things start to get ridiculous because just a couple weeks into his rehab process, he fell off his bike on the way to lunch and broke his wrist, officially ending any chance he had of returning in 2022. At this point, the injuries to Sale were starting to get out of control. Elbow inflammation shut him down in 2019, Tommy John surgery kept him out till late 2021, then in 2022 he had a stress fracture in his rib, a broken finger off a comebacker, and a broken wrist after falling off his bike. Even the Sox's chief baseball officer commented on the plethora of injuries Sale had to endure, stating they needed to find whoever has his voodoo doll and get them to stop the madness. And whether it be this or just plain luck, Sale was able to begin the 2023 season in the rotation, the first time he managed to do so since 2019, but he was a shell of his former self, managing a 4.58 ERA through his first 11 starts. And after getting removed from his 11th outing early on June 1st, he was placed on the injured list once again, this time being diagnosed with a stress fracture in his scapula, keeping him out till mid-August, where he'd go on to make nine more starts down the stretch, giving him 20 total starts for the season, nine more than he had the previous three years combined. But his 4.30 ERA showed there was still work to be done to return to his former glory. This coupled with the fact the Red Sox finished in the basement of the AL East for the third time in four years, as well as a new chief baseball officer in Craig Breslow, they were looking to reduce payroll, with Chris Sale the most obvious guy to be dealt, being owed $55 million across 2024 to 2025. These rumors came to fruition on December 30th, 2023, as the club moved him alongside $17 million for infielder Vaughn Grissom. It was the end of an era in Boston for their World Series winning ace, and on the way out, he had some words to say. Leaving Boston wasn't easy. I've been there for a long time. It was a second home to me. My family loved it, my kids loved it, and Boston treated my family the best. It was great. But at the same time, I felt like I went through some really tough times there, and they always had my back. He would go on to mention, I felt like this was an opportunity to put me in a situation to help myself, and put the Red Sox in a situation to help them too. I felt like I kind of owed them something because the last few years haven't quite lived up to what I wanted to be there. It was in favor to both parties. He was right. After signing his mega deal at the beginning of the 2019 season, he would go on to post a 4.16 ERA between 2019 to 2023, while only averaging 11 starts per season. But as he mentioned, parting ways with the Red Sox, although it hurt, was the right thing to do. It allowed the club to save money they could use for pieces in the future, and for Sale, a fresh start in a new city, clubhouse, and coaches has been exactly what he has needed to get his career back on track. So far this year, Sale has been everything and then some for the Braves, who lost Spencer Strider for the season in April due to Tommy John surgery. And the biggest reason why he's been able to rekindle his past success has been from his work in the offseason because for the first time since all the way back in 2018, he was able to throw throughout the winter without any limitations, allowing him to enter the season both physically and mentally prepared. And after 11 starts, his name is among the best in baseball in most pitching categories. For example, among starters with at least 65 innings pitched, his ERA ranks 14th in all of baseball with a 306 figure. His 250 FIP is the lowest in the National League and 4th best in the majors, and his strikeouts per walk ratio at 820 is the best in the National League, 4th in baseball. This dominance has helped the Braves to an 8-3 record in games he starts, and when he doesn't, they have been just 24-21, and which would only be on pace for 86 wins. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that Sale has been one of the most important players on this Braves squad and his resurgence has been nothing short of incredible after suffering setback after setback after setback. So let's uncover exactly what he has been able to write in 2024. For starters, let's take a look at his baseball stuff on page throughout his disappointing years. And as you can see, his numbers being in the gray and blue shows how far away he was from being effective. Now compare this to his 2018 campaign when he posted his lowest ERA of his career at 211. Here you can see how elite his numbers looked when he was at his best. Now take a look at 2024. It's much closer replicating his 2018 season rather than any of the previous four. In fact, some stats are better than they have ever been. For instance, his chase rate of 36.5% is the highest of his career and ranks best in all of baseball. 
He has also posted the highest first pitch strike percentage of his career at 71.4, a figure that ranks 9th in all of baseball, and because of his effectiveness of throwing first pitch strikes, it has helped him pitch with the count in his favor at the third best rate in baseball at 36.9%. And this has all stemmed from many, many things, but it's hard not to say him being healthy throughout the offseason gave him the opportunity to build up in a way he hadn't been able to for many years, which in turn has allowed him to throw his four seam fastball at 95 miles per hour greater, 44. 4.7% of the time, compared to 2019 to 2023 when he was only able to do so on 25.9% of his fastballs. That's a big difference. And because of this, his slider has been able to play a lot more effectively since batters now have to worry about not catching up to his fastball, while before, they could cheat a bit. This has further been proven to be a help for his slider, with it ranking as the third best in baseball in terms of run value, only behind Zach Littell and Tanner Houck. And if somehow all this wasn't enough to convince you that Vintage Sale is finally back, just watch this pitch. Like I said, he's probably oh, done this quite God. a bit. Right? Get a smile, he tried a tough guy this one. It's not often pitchers can get away with hitting a batter by getting him to swing, but Sale did just that. And if he's able to continue this success, as well as most importantly staying healthy, then he has a legitimate shot at winning his first ever Cy Young Award. But regardless, his resurgence is an incredible story for any player struggling with injuries, and goes to show by working hard no matter the circumstances, you will always be able to turn the corner in whatever is holding you back.